Good morning, Westminster, and welcome to this weekend's digital worship service. Now, last weekend, we announced that we would be opening up our sanctuary today for a, a modified in-person worship service. So, so we're doing that today, but I also want to ensure you that, that these digital services are going to continue throughout the summer. As a church, we, we've been learning quite a bit during, during this, this interesting season that we are in. One of the lessons that we've learned is, is that we realize that, that we need to continue our commitment to building our online platform. Now, every, everything we do from, from these services to our, our Zoom gatherings to our, our social media presence, everything that we do online, it's all important when it, when it comes to being a church in today's world. And, and another lesson that we have been learning during the season, or really a reminder that we've been given, is that we really are a congregation with a very diverse set of preferences and a very diverse set of opinions. So our, our worship committee, they sent out a, a survey a couple weeks ago about where we stand with, with, with this pandemic and reopening for worship. And, and, and the responses were really all over the place. They enforced the reality that we really are a, a church with, with different perspectives. Now, it really is one of the beautiful things about our church, about our, our community. So when we say as a congregation that we invite all people to follow Jesus on a journey of faith, friendship, and service, we're saying that no matter where you stand on, on whatever issue it might be, we believe that there is a place for you in this community, that, that you have something to offer that's of value and that we can learn from one another as we follow Jesus together. So as we begin our, our service this morning, let's, let's remember that we are a church, a church full of a diverse set of perspectives and that we are all seeking to follow Jesus in the midst of, of all that's going on. Will you please join me in prayer? Loving God, wherever we sit this morning, we ask that you would meet us in that place and that all that we do, no, no matter where we are, we would bring you glory and honor. Be with us as we worship you together and we pray these things in your name, amen. and I'm new to staff here at WPC. I am serving as the Ministry Connection Coordinator and I am looking forward to meeting you all hopefully sometime soon. 
Now, today's reading is from 1 Kings, and um, we're reading chapter 19. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the quiet of this moment, in the hush of dawn's first light, my heart's voice, my voice begins to Mighty God, you spoke creation into existence, you breathed life into our lungs, and you gave us a purpose. Even when the world seems as though it's spinning out of control, you hold it and you hold us in your hands. When things don't make sense or when we're, we're angry with one thing or another, you welcome our complaints. You invite our lament. Help us to remember that you long to be in a close relationship with us to hear what's on our minds, both the, the good and the bad and the difficult. God, remind us above all else that, that we are loved. We come to you this morning recognizing that all is not right in this world. We, we are a broken people living in a broken and divided world. So Lord, we, we continue to lift up our country as this virus continues to, to rear its ugly head and as we try to respond as individuals and as communities. Help us to be gentle with one another. Remind us that we are called to love our neighbors, no matter how different their worldview and experience might be from our own. God, we pray for our leaders, nationally, on the state level and locally. We ask for wisdom, for intervention, for peace. Heal our country and heal our neighborhoods. And remind those of us who, who call WPC home that, 
that we are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation in the places that we call home, where we live. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see our neighbors. Help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. And give us the strength and the courage we need to follow you each and every day. God, we pray all these things in the way that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I absolutely love summertime. And I know the summer looks a little bit different than anything any of us have experienced before, but, but a couple weeks ago, I was reminded why I love summer so much. Haley and I, we were uh, celebrating our 15th wedding anniversary and trying to figure out what we could do during a time like this to celebrate. And so we decided to head to the beach for a picnic because there's nothing quite as romantic as sand castles and sandy fish tacos with your kids. And so it was at about 6.30 or 7 o'clock, kind of that, that golden hour that's not really sunset, but heading towards sunset, where there was just this kind of calmness in the air. Our, our kids, they were laughing, they were running back and forth to the water and playing with one another. And, and so we actually had a time for the two of us to sit down and talk. Everything slowed down. It was almost quiet and still. Now, of course, it, it didn't last all that long. One kid was cold and needed a towel. Another one needed someone to go into the water with them. And the third finally decided it was time to eat dinner, even though the rest of us had already eaten. But for a few minutes, the, the world just kind of slowed down. And it reminded me how important it is to seek out those slower moments, to create space for those slower moments. So this summer, as, as a church, we, we are exploring what it looks like to grow spiritually in the middle of a messy and busy world through the practice of spiritual disciplines, or, or really through creating healthy spiritual habits. Now this morning and into this week, I'm going to encourage us to, to explore the discipline of, of meditation and silence. Now, when we hear the word meditation in today's world, we attach all kinds of different meanings. Now, most of those meanings have to do with connecting to our innermost self or, or kind of escaping from the realities around the world. And because of the, the mysticism that's connected to the word, a lot of Christians feel uneasy when they hear the word meditate. But, but we don't need to necessarily feel uncomfortable with it. When Joshua takes over as the leader of the Israelites after Moses dies, God tells him to be strong and, to, and courageous and to meditate on God's law day and night. And, and the Psalms, they are full of places where meditation is encouraged. And, and Jesus constantly spent time himself away from his friends away from the crowds, uh, up in the mountains, listening for his father's voice. Now, popular de definitions of, of meditation tend to focus on kind of detaching from everything that's around us, detaching from the world, just getting away. And, and that sort of meditation that's, that, that's, that, that we practice today or that we talk about today, it's different from what scripture calls us to. It, that sort of meditation calls us to detach from everything, but scripture calls us to attach to God all the time and, and all that we do at every moment. It, it's the idea that God's presence uh, it, it, it's, it's, is always with us. Uh, we, we, we sing about it in the popular hymn, In the Garden. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. Most of us like the concept of God being close, but we're not always intentional with making space to be in God's presence. Now, the passage that, that we read earlier from 1 Kings 
tells the story of Elijah hearing God's voice. And and though we might not and probably don't hear God in the exact same way that Elijah did, the, the the encounter that Elijah has, it reminds us that God often speaks in a whisper and in times of silence. So 1 and 2 Kings, this part of the Bible, it it tells about a time in Israel's history that was very, very difficult. The people, they're they're constantly breaking their covenant commitments with God, and there's growing political unrest, and there's just kind of constant uneasiness throughout throughout all the people. And when we get to 1 1 Kings, excuse me, 19, Judah and Israel, the different tribes, they're, they're battling against one another. Now, idolatry and greed, they're they're tearing apart the people. And by the time we get to 1 Kings chapter 17, there's a king named Ahab who's at odds with Elijah. King Ahab, he refers to Elijah as this troubler of Israel. And and Elijah, he he goes back and forth with Ahab and he he calls him out and, and he pretty much says, look, the drought that our people are experiencing right now, it's come because of generations and generations of failed leadership and failed idolatry. There's a big standoff between Elijah and the priests of the most popular idol, Baal, and it all comes to a climax when Elijah asks God to bring down fire on an altar. Elijah has the priest of Baal killed, and then when he hears that there's a group of bounty hunters that are, are coming after him, he flees. He travels for 40 days in the wilderness, thinking about his own life, what, what he should do next, and, and eventually he, he finds a mountain. He crawls into a cave in the mountainside, right on the, the southern border of Judah, and in that cave he falls asleep. Now we read that while he's there, the Lord comes to him and says, What are you doing here? What are you doing here? And Elijah essentially throws his hands up in the air and and just kind of lets it all out. I've done everything that you've asked. I've done all that you've asked. And the world around me is just going insane and I'm tired of it all. How often do we find ourselves with they, those same sort of feelings? How often do we find ourselves in those, those places where we're just frustrated about injustice, about the state of the world, uh, whatever it might be? I, I know that I've been there at least a few times over the last few weeks and months where I just want to throw my hands in the air and say, ah! And as Elijah's in that place, the Lord says, go out and stand on the side of the mountain and wait for the presence of the Lord to pass you by. Wait. There's a mighty wind and there's a great earthquake, but Elijah doesn't hear God or doesn't find God in those places. Then there's this fire and still nothing. God shows up in the gentle whisper, or as the King James Version puts it, in the still, small voice. Elijah finally hears God's voice when he he, he slows down and is quiet. He he had been running around like a madman, wondering what he should do next, wondering how he could solve the problems of his day. And what he needed to do was to slow down, to stop, to listen, to meditate and reconnect with the God who called him and with the God who gave him a purpose. So this week, I'm going to nudge each of us to set set aside a a few minutes every day to do the same thing, to listen for that still, small voice. We're going to talk about what that means in just a a few minutes for for each of us. But as Elijah connects with God in the silence on the the side of that mountain, he he shares his concerns. He pours out his heart's to God. He he says, God, all of this is going on. What do I do? And then he listens. Now, I don't know about y'all, but usually when I'm praying through something important, I spend a lot of time talking, kind of pouring out all that I'm feeling. Maybe I I even spend time looking for the fire or the wind, some sort of answer. And sometimes in the middle of pouring out my heart and yelling at God or or looking for the big thing, I miss that gentle voice. 
Now, the Apostle Paul calls sitting and listening for the gentle voice. He, he calls it praying without ceasing. And in the celebration of discipline, Richard Foster, he, he refers to it as a perpetual presence of the Lord, that we seek perpetual presence of the Lord. So this week, I want to challenge us to set aside some time to just listen, to sit in God's presence. And I'm going to give us kind of four quick steps on, on how we can practice this, this discipline to begin to build it as a habit in our lives. Some of you might be familiar with the Benedictine practice of Lectio Divina, and these steps, they come directly from it. The, the first step is, is to read. Find a, a scripture passage, read through it a few different times. If you need a place to start, I'd recommend the Psalms, uh, maybe Psalm 40 or Psalm 46. Now, meditating on scripture is different than studying scripture. When we study scripture, we, we focus on things like context. We focus on things like original meaning. When we meditate on scripture, the goal is to internalize what we read. So, so we read through a passage and we, we look for one word or, or a phrase of a few words in the passage that stand out. And then we, we focus on that, that one thought, that one area. And then we reflect. So we, so we read and then we reflect. Now, now we ask ourselves the question of why, why do we think this word or phrase stands out? What, what does it, what is it about it that, that makes that word stand out to you at this moment of time? Be honest, reflect. This is between you and God. And if you want to, write down whatever you're reflecting. You respond to those reflections by praying, doing what Elijah does in the cave and just saying whatever comes to mind. Don't, don't hold back. And then the most important part, which can also be the most uncomfortable for us, resting, listening. It's tempting to rush through that last step, but if we don't take time to sit in God's presence, we risk missing that, that still soft voice. One of my favorite moments in, in Matthew's gospel comes right after Jesus explains that you have to know the Son to know the Father. It, it's one of those moments where I imagine the disciples were, were, were overwhelmed. It was just a lot to take in. They're just trying to figure out everything that, that Jesus had just shared, and, and, and they, were, they were struggling. And then Jesus says this, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus' invitation comes in, in the midst of uh, his disciples being overwhelmed, in the midst of chaos. Both political and, and religious leaders were at odds with one another, and, and most people were just trying to figure out how to make it from one day to the next. Really, it wasn't all that different from what we're experiencing ourselves today. And, and in the middle of that kind of overwhelming chaos, Jesus offers a deep rest, a deep rest. It's the same offer that he makes to us today. So, so this week, as you set aside time to be silent, to listen, my hope is that you would experience that, that, that type of rest that as we practice this discipline, we would hear that still, small voice. Amen.
As we continue to navigate this COVID-19 world together, our church community is finding new and exciting ways to, to be on this journey of faith, friendship, and, and service together. This past week, Sarah Ramos and our children's ministry team, they put on an innovative vacation Bible camp for our kids that was Hawaiian themed and it was, it was called the Friendship Luau. It was this combination of, of distance events, like live, safe distance events, like car parades and a photo booth, combined with, with digital gatherings and, and projects in homes. In a year that's been everything but normal, Sarah and her team, they, they put together a week that I really, really appreciated as a parent and, and thoroughly enjoyed as a pastor. So a big thank you to, to Sarah and to everyone who volunteered and contributed to the week that we had together. As we continue in the coming week, our Women for Women's Ministry is having an event tonight in Bernice Bennett Park at 6.30 p.m. Now, if you're interested in what's happening in the world of women ministry at, at WPC, you can contact Kathy and she will connect you with the right person. Or you can just bring a chair and, and, and your mask tonight to the park and, and come and hang out. Next Sunday, we'll continue uh, in offering our digital worship experience as well as our modified in-person service gathering that started today. Now, remember, if you want to come to the in-person service, we're asking that, that everyone registers. And, and you can do that online every week, or you can call Kathy or Catherine in the office, and they will get you set up. Next Sunday, remember, is the first Sunday of the month when we typically celebrate communion with one another. And because of all the safety protocols that we've been following for our in-person gathering, we won't be celebrating community here at church, and we invite everyone to partake in communion at home with our digital service. So make sure this week at some point you pick up the elements, and remember really that any bread or any sort of drink will work just fine. Now many of you have continued to partner with WPC financially during this season, and, and thank you very much. You can continue to give to the church uh, by giving online, by texting the word WPC GIVE to 77977, or by mailing a check into the office. And remember that all of our, our tithes and offerings and gifts, that they all go to support the ministry and mission of our church. And now as we conclude this morning's worship service, let's join together with Ed and our worship team as we sing Another in the Fire. There's a grace when the heart is on the fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know 
Oh, I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need a mind Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the bird Where another died for me There is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world and I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever be reminded What power set me free There is a grave that holds no power Seen and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. And I know I will never be alone. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the sea. Respond, reflect, rest. As we seek to be a, a people who are growing in our faith, let, let's spend some time this week practicing meditation, practicing listening, practicing being a people of, of prayer, focusing on that, that still, small voice of God. And as we do that together, may you experience the peace of Christ in your homes and throughout this week. Amen. Amen.